Aether has significantly updated the 450X and yes, it does look the same, but they've made substantial changes to the range, to how it handles and of course, there's a new price as well. Ready for all of that? Watch till the end and stay tuned. Welcome to Padre. Apple and Porsche make excellent products. Both believe in evolution rather than revolution. And I think that's how Aether is turning out to be as well. So this generation 3 450X, bookings open 15th of July, deliveries start 20th of July, and we can expect that the price will go up roughly 10,000 rupees, our guess. To visually differentiate this one from the older one, they put one new sticker, which is... There's no sticker. You can get it in that white, that gray, and this green. And visually, the Gen 3 looks exactly the same as the old one. Not updating the styling since 2018 is a missed opportunity. What they have changed are the larger, completely redesigned rearview mirrors. Varun's complained about this, and if you're following him now, he will see you. Not later, now. Now, Aether has changed things under the skin, and they're making those changes count. The biggest change, of course, is the battery pack itself, which is larger, and that means a bigger aluminium enclosure. It's 20 mm longer than before, which in turn means that the mounting points for the battery pack on the same old frame have changed now. The scooter's also about four kilos heavier than before. This allows Aether to offer 105 kilometers of range in their Smart Eco mode, and that's Aether's real-world range number. We'll believe this number because Aether's display usually shows startlingly accurate range predictions. Aether says most of its customers, a 218 million kilometer database, ride around 30 kilometers daily. 80 is enough, they say. However, for new customers, 100 plus kilometers seems to be a psychologically important threshold to cross. And that's part of what Aether's been working on for the past two years. It takes them that long because Aether wants to deliver a flawless, consistent experience irrespective of terrain, weather or temperature. For this, the new battery pack has all the safety systems that work so well for Aether up to now. But Aether says this 25% larger battery pack has other implications. It extends the service life of the battery too. Because you go longer per charge, you'll charge less often on your commute, and that's one way to extend your battery life. The other one is that now there are more cells in the battery pack, and what that means is the load that you need from the battery when you're riding at a certain speed is spread over more cells, therefore you generate less heat. And the less you heat up the battery, the longer it lasts. Charging times haven't changed overall, though 0 to 80% needs 55 minutes longer than before for sure. The 3.3 kilowatt motor, no change there, uses the larger battery to offer no real change in performance. Real world range in eco mode jumps 20 kilometers in Gen 3. The old ride mode offered 70 kilometers and now it's 85, same as the old eco mode. I do love warp mode and seeing 65 kilometers on a full charge, knowing that the Aether will allow me to use all 65 of those kilometers is obviously a good event for me. The sport mode has always been a nice blend of performance and range, and now you see 15 kilometers more of range on that, so that's a thumbs up too. What Aether has not done for the Gen 3 is change how the throttle works, because that was already a highly polished, finely tuned experience. Today though, the Aether is not the fastest electric scooter money can buy. But this level of finesse, Still unrivaled. Aether says it was quite happy with the overall dynamics of the 450X and so it hasn't made significant changes to the chassis or the setup. It retuned the suspension to manage the extra weight. These new tyres from MRF are co-developed to offer more grip in the dry and the wet and they're supposed to be grippier and with the wider 100 section rear more confident. Now these new tyres are transforming this Aether's handling. And it's not just because the rear tyre is fatter. That old scooter's knife edge feeling where when you turned it, it felt like it was on edge, it has completely disappeared because these tyres are doing a fantastic job. So it handles really, really well. It is super planted. The ride quality has improved. The surety with which you can brake hard has changed. The rear doesn't lock up that early. It's actually very, very, very good. 
What can change further, and it's an opportunity more than a problem, is that the right quality can be tuned further now for a more refined experience. Keep it easy, keep it breezy, keep it light, cause it's all right. The final puzzle piece for the Gen 3 is the tech and connectivity, where Aether has given it more RAM and storage. Which sounds a little bit like whatevs, bro, but it makes a difference immediately. The experience is more fluid, things load faster, and the screen responds much quicker than before. Aether says the extra room for storage and processing should enable in the future voice commands, offline maps, fancier graphics, as well as more granular diagnostics. The world is yours if you want it. Go get it. Jump on it. Clearly, Aether is an engineering company. They've taken an impressive riding experience and raised the bar by making a key set of significant changes. So you can have more range. You can have all the performance you want in every mode. What is promised will be delivered. And of course, the feature set is slightly bigger now and it's a lot more fluid to use. Now the Generation 3 scooter is not going to be cheap. The older Aethers weren't either. But what we know now is that Aethers tend to offer a happy riding experience. It's trouble-free, it's slick and you'd rather enjoy it. And to me, that is value for money, especially considering that the oldest Aethers are reporting battery health, which is still far in excess of what Aether themselves were expecting. I'm loving this feeling. It's such a good feeling. In that sense, Aether's Apple side is on course. The Porsche side needs more work though. I mean, all those 911s look very similar, but even Stuttgart knows that big model changes need a mix of subtle and obvious visual cues to keep things fresh. That's the missing link for me. The Generation 3 450X should definitely have been offered at least in fresh colours. But the visual update, to me, is long overdue. Tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pardrift. Please do all of these things for us and please do share this video with your friends.